this is a note about reading, reading and interpreting weather maps. Um, uh, it, it's a detail, but it's a it's an important detail, um, and want to show the value of the program QTVLM. Uh, for doing this exercise, and um, and we we do this, we want to be able to read these maps. So because we these maps are made by professional meteorologists, whereas we want to actually navigate and do our weather routing using grid files of just model forecasts. So we want to compare the two to see that we have some faith in our model forecast data. And so let's start out, and I'm doing this more or less live. So. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I get through it. So here's Pacific weather right this moment, and um, and let's look at that. So if you see that this is a surface analysis, and they have winds. Winds are reported here periodically. I mean. It's, it's, uh, every once in a while, and these are actually ship reports. But when you go to uh, when you go to the forecast, let's go on down here to say a 48-hour. Nope, that's a wind and wave. Now if they do have a wind and wave forecast, but it doesn't have the isobars on it and so forth. Here's what we want, and but there's all sorts of ways to put these pieces together. But let's just look at this one example right now. And so here's a 48-hour forecast. And uh, they don't give the winds on these, and uh, they unless they're over 33 knots. And then you see there's one example right there. So we know in this case that at this latitude, 47, 40, you know, 48, 47 around here, that this spacing right here corresponds to 35 knots of wind, nominal 35. But let's say we want to know the wind right about here right about here for some reason. That's what we want to know. And it doesn't tell us that, but we have a way to figure that. There's a, and there's a couple things involved. First of all, we have a very simple formula that tells us what the wind speed is based on the isobar spacing and the latitude, but that's for straight isobars, like in here, or like in here, like in here. But when you start getting curvature, then that changes the uh, wind speed for the, the predicted uh, wind speed that you would get. And when there's curvature around a low, it reduces the speed, and curvature around a high increases the speed. So here's the case we want to do, and I could we could figure this out now, but let's just start out by doing something like, uh, oh, wait a minute, shift command four. See, I'll just grab a picture of this map, you know, something like, uh, you know, there to there, and save it. And then I can, um, uh, let's see, where is that proof? Okay, so here is that capture I just did of that map, which is live right now. Well, it's the most recent forecast, 48-hour uh, forecast there. So that's the one we're going to use. And then we're going to go into uh, QTVLM to do a couple things. First of all, forecast what the wind would be at this point if what, what we think the wind would be what we think the wind would be at this point if the isobars were straight, and then see what the reduction is due to the curvature. So the first thing we have to do is find the curvature, and then we'll dip into our textbook to find out what the formulas are to apply that stuff. And so, okay, so, we're, okay, and what's the valid? I'm gonna need the valid time here for another check at the end. This is a 12, 12 Z. 12Z, May 1, May 1, 12Z, May 1. Okay, that's good. So we're sort of done with that. And so, oh, here's a textbook, and we'll come back to this in a minute. But we're going to start out using this table where we need to know how far apart the isobars are. But let's first get this thing georeferenced in here using the, the program. And I have some videos that explain this process and uh, elsewhere. But you go to Grib, Weather Images, and this is QTVLM. It's a, um, a free or a donation supported uh, navigation and routing, weather routing program uh, for Mac or PC. And uh, lock the, carry uh, one, lock the image. Let's see if this is the right one. Yeah, I loaded this just a second ago, just to be sure. I loaded that, and it's locked. Let's just see here. It's okay. And is it properly geo-referenced? Yes. Okay, so that looks okay. I'm going to leave the details then for the geo-referencing of the map. That's a, that's a, we have a couple of videos on that. It's a, it's a very straightforward process. 
Um, and so now we have this geo reference and we can start measuring things. Here's where we want to, uh, here, and let's see. Let me get, can I roll, get a little bit bigger scale? Okay, that's, whoa, I lost my map. Uh, okay. Oh, maybe there's a maximum zoom on these. Yeah, could well be a maximum zoom. Okay, that's good enough. So we need to know if this were straight isobars, we need to know this distance from here. to. We need to know the latitude. Well, I can read the latitude down here in the bottom corner. The latitude is 45 degrees. That's fine. Now this spacing, yeah, I would just go here and just say ruler tool. And let's see, what do I get? Um, that looks like I get oh, 97, 90, okay, 97 miles, 97 nautical miles. Now I need to have that in um, degrees, so 97 divided by 60 is equal, okay, 1.6 degrees. So this is 1.6 degrees of that, so now we go in the book. 1.6, so that's uh, pretty close to 1.5 here at 45. So that's 30 knots, right here is 30 knots. V equals 30. So if there were straight isobars, we'd expect that point to have 30 knots of wind. But now we have to go and get the curvature. And let's see, where did our picture go? Okay, there's our picture. And um, I mean, is this too small? Okay, there it is. So I need to draw a circle here. Let me just do this. Let me take the, and it's going to be a little bit bigger than this one. So let me take the ruler tool and then just go maybe, oh yeah, 400. 400, okay, escape. So I'm going to make a mark and I'm going to move it around somewhere, but I'm going to say a new mark and then this is going to be R equals 200. Now, what's 200? Well, let's see if 200 works. Uh, oh, okay, R equals 200. So, but I want one range ring, and I want that to be 200, radius 200 nautical miles. Enter, 200, okay. Everything, I think, okay. So there is the ring. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, so that would be roughly the curvature of this isobar as a radius is a radius 200 nautical miles. So R equals 200, but we need that in degrees. 200 divided by 60 equals 3.3. .3. Okay, there we've got what we want. V, the wind velocity is 30 knots. The, um, the uh, radius is 3.3 .3 degrees. We need that in degrees. Now we come back to the book and go to the V, the curvature correction which is here, V squared over R. Oh, V squared over R. So we've got 900, 30 times 30, 900 divided by 3.3 3 is 273. Two, okay, almost right in there. So it's 20%. 20 percent, and this is the reduction of 20 percent, and that is around a low, so it reduces it. So 20 percent of 30 is 6. 30 minus 6, so the 30 goes to 24 knots. Okay, so we would expect here, at this point, a wind speed of 24 knots. Now, what we can do, since this is all live, uh, let me see, okay, I can, get rid of the, I can get rid of this map, we don't need that. Uh, oh no, wrong program. Grib, um, weather images, close the weather image. 24 knots. Now I can also just with this program, I could just do like shift and do something like that and say right click. And this is a this is a real fast way to get a GFS wind. What I just did. I I haven't. That's uh, I have to come back and explain it. But you could load any you could load any model in the program. But there's that. And so what was it? 12Z at May 1. So I go here. And we set this at uh, 12Z right here. Okay. And oh, and turn it on. Okay. Turn it on. 
And there's the target. And that wind, where's the wind? That's saying, let's see, am I on the right date? Let me check the time. The time is May 1st at 12 o'clock, okay. So let me just do a, a, a mediogram here. Ah, okay, excellent. Okay, excellent. All right, well, all right, right at 12 o'clock, it's, you know, it's lower, 18 knots. But look at this. This area, this area is destined for 24 knots. I mean, it's like, it's like science at work, frankly. So that works. And so it is remarkable. And so what that means is, so that curvature has a whole six knots. That's a real number. So that means that we can trust the, uh, we can probably trust this G, this uh, GRIB forecast, this GFS forecast, because it gives essentially the same thing that the um, that the that the graphic map produced by the National Weather Service says. But if you didn't make that correction, you'd be sitting around saying, well, they say it's 30 knots and it's actually only 24. So that's the value of looking at the uh, curvature correction. In some cases, it really has to be strong winds or tight isobars before this makes a difference. But it could, it could sometimes make a difference. You can also have, we have cases in the textbook where it's a really big enhancement of a tight bend around a high. But that's in the book. Okay, I'm going to stop there.